Okay, before we get started with all of the points of pixel art, let's just take a moment and we'll do a quick tour around the app we're going to be using. We're using this app Pixelbowl. It looks kind of like a squid. Now, you can probably use any pixel app that you want, but this is the one that I found that it's just simple and easy to use. So that's what I'm going to be using for all of the demonstrations. So I'll just go ahead and we'll tap in here. And we're just going to take a quick tour of the app. You can see I've got projects. That's what you see here immediately are a bunch of projects all running down the side. And we'll be looking at a bunch of these as we go through the course and learn more about pixel art. You can click on projects to go into them. And there's a duplicate on the right hand side if you want to start working on a new project, but start with everything that you had in the old project. And then we're just going to go ahead and we're going to hit new project. And immediately we can choose our canvas size. So that's what we're going to do first is we're just going to choose our canvas size. In this class we're going to be working in 16 by 16 which is kind of the old resolution back from the days of like the Game Boy and the original Nintendo. So we're just going to go with 16 by 16 here and click OK. And then we're greeted with the interface. Now I am using the iPad so it looks a little bit different on iPhone. I use the iPhone a lot too but we're going to be using the iPad here just so that it's easier for you to see what I'm doing on the bigger size screen. It's just a little bit easier that way. But you can see we've got our canvas in the middle and then the other major thing is our layers on the right. And the layers on the right is what you won't see on the iPhone. You have to open up a separate layers panel on the iPhone to be able to see those just because of the smaller screen size. So you won't see that, but for the most part, it will look the same for you. We've got our canvas and the grid is turned on. So that's this blue option here. It's blue because it's turned on. And if we tap it, it will turn white and then the grid is off. So blue means it's selected. Just to the left of that, we have our gear and that has our different options. So we can change the size of our canvas if we need to. We can title it, although you can title it when you save it, so you don't have to go into here to title it. Then we have the in-app purchase to remove ads, which you can totally do if you want to. The only thing you'd get is ad removal, so you don't really get any new features or anything, but it does save you a little bit of time and a little bit of distraction. There's the display grid, which we have a separate button for, and the show zoom controller, so you can turn that on then you see you get these different interface buttons here which allow you to zoom. Now you can just zoom with pinch gestures which is what we're going to be doing. So we're going to turn that off and then you can choose whether the layers are on the left or the right. I'm left handed so I'm going to keep them on the right so that they aren't in the way as I'm drawing. But if you're right handed you might want to move them to the left. Just depends on what suits you. And then you can reset the tutorial. You might have been greeted with the tutorial if you just opened it up. The tutorial can be helpful because you can learn some things about it. So you can reset that if you need to learn it again and you can write a review and that's basically it. I just tap off to the side to close that. Okay, then there are the undo and redo buttons. We haven't done anything, so we can't see that yet. But if we draw something, we then get the undo. And when we undo it, then we get the redo. Then you have save and export. These look a little bit different if you're on the iPhone, but they do the same things. They still say save and export. They just aren't colored the same. And it's pretty easy to understand what they do. If you click save, you'll get to save your project. If you click export, you'll get to export your project, which we'll talk about at the end of this course. You can also save it when you hit back. So that's normally what I do because an ad will always play when you save. So I normally wait until I'm hitting back to leave and then it gives you the option to save. So you see when we hit back, we see save and return or don't save and return. So I always just choose save and return. Then I watch the ad and then I get back to the home screen. Because if you save here and then hit back, you've just watched an extra ad. Then of course, like we talked about, we have the layers on the right. There is the pencil, which shows you which one you're currently selected on and editing. And then there's the eyeball, which will turn it on and off. So let's say we redo that so we have a red line. If we hit the eyeball, we can't see it anymore. You always start with this bottom layer, which is a white background. You can turn that off though and see your transparency. And then you have the three dots, which will open up the layer options menu. There you also have visibility, but you can also merge down, duplicate, change the opacity, control your color tone, or make an edge. The edge just lets you automatically like add an edge to your thing if that's what you like. And then you can also delete it. So let's delete that. For some reason, this is in Chinese still. It didn't get translated, but that's fine. We know what it says. Just click OK and it's deleted. We can click Add at the bottom to add a new one back. And there's also this Edit button at the bottom which lets you delete or you can move. It's hard to see the Move button, but it's on the very right. It's three little lines. You just tap on that and you can move up and down. And you can just click Done to close out of there. Then we go to the bottom of the screen. Well, first we have our color palette and we can select different color palettes by tapping on the three dots. And we have a bunch of different color palettes that are pre-made. We can also make our own colors by tapping on the colored square on the far left of the toolbar. And there we have our picker, or we can use RGB, or we can use HSB. I mostly use HSB, so say we wanted a darker red. We'll just drag to the left, 
Click OK. And we have a darker red. So whichever color you're selected on will be replaced when you do that. Let's briefly go over these tools. The pen is your basic tool. If you tap on it and then tap on it again, you can select how big it's going to be, how many pixels it will take up. I almost always work in one pixel when I'm working in 16 by 16. If you were working in something bigger, you might want a larger brush for your pen. The cursor, I never use the cursor. It allows you to move things as though you were on the computer. I don't use that. I don't find it helpful. The eyedropper tool is for selecting color. This is great if you want to pick up a color off of your canvas. Just be aware it will replace whatever color you're currently selected on. But there's an easier way to get the eyedropper tool. Let me just show you. If I draw something here, then I can actually just get the eyedropper tool by holding on the screen and dragging to select whichever color I want. So that works super well. And then there's the eraser tool. This will just erase whatever you tap on and it has the same brush options as the pen and then there's the fill tool so let's select green fill you can just tap and it will fill all of the contiguous squares so it filled everything that was there up until the red edges so that works pretty much how you'd expect if you tap on the move tool you can move everything that's on your layer just move it around and you have these arrows that appear so that you can do small one pixel movements the select tool will let you select just part of your layer and then you can take different actions on it. I'll generally select something and then go to the move tool and then I can move just that part of it. The hand tool is for panning around on large documents. Zoom in here. If we do that, we can pan. But you can also pan with two fingers at any time so you don't really need the hand tool. The image tool will let you bring in an image if you're using something for reference. The line tool will just draw in a line. The rectangle tool will obviously draw in a rectangle. And then the rectangle tool too will draw a filled in rectangle. Then you have the ellipse tools. The ellipse tools are a little funky in how they react. So I don't generally use them because they don't make great ellipses. The reflect tool will let you take a selection and flip it or flip your entire canvas. So say I flip this, flips everything. Now the mirror tool is super useful when you are drawing something like a person because it will reflect across the axis. So you choose mirror and you can choose to do a top bottom, a left right, or a four quadrant and it will mirror whatever you're drawing. So say you're drawing something like a person that's symmetrical, you can just draw it on one side and it will automatically draw it on the other. So that's quite useful and we will probably use that in our project. Rotate will allow you to rotate what's on your canvas and scale will allow you to make things larger or smaller. Sort will allow you to choose which tools go where so that you can make the best tool set that you want at the beginning. I'm going to go ahead and sort these for the primary tools that we're going to be using, which is going to be the pen, the eraser, the fill tool, Rectangle 2, Move, Select, and Mirror. Those are the ones that I find we need to use the most. Of course, we'll use the eyedropper tool as well, but we don't need it to be up at the top because we can just access it by holding down. So I'll click OK. And now I have my most important tools right here so I can access them all at once. In the next video, we'll take a look at some classic pixel art so that we have some examples to understand the principles we'll be learning. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope that you've learned something useful here. This video is part of an entire course where you can learn the project from beginning to end that I've created over on Skillshare. Skillshare is an online community where teachers share their skills with students so that they can learn new things. So Skillshare is really a great place for you to elevate your learning to the next level. You can always click the links and get two months for free of Skillshare. That's plenty of time to watch my classes and then you don't have to subscribe if you don't want to after that but they can help you take it to the next level. So go ahead and check out the link in the description for the full course that this video comes from. Thanks for watching. We'll talk in the comments and I'll see you in the next video.